All right, this is decidedly less sexy than me undies, but it's something that we're really passionate about. It's what True Signal, the, the premise that True Signal is founded on, um, is really the mid funnel and helping marketers uh, create new demand for themselves. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Um, and we're also really passionate about it because we think very few marketers are really taking advantage of this capability in the market. Uh, so I want to talk you through um, how to do that and how to think about it. Um, so uh, True Signal, for those of you who don't know us, um, we don't fit in a great box. We're, we think of ourselves as a marketing services, um, digital marketing services and analytics firm. Everything we do is based on helping clients, marketers, target, measure, and execute media much more efficiently and driving uh, revenue growth and profitable revenue growth. So what is mid-funnel? Because um, I hear that all the time it means many different things. There's branding. People are putting their ads in front of people that look like their general demographic, their age group, et cetera. And there's bottom funnel. I think that's what um, you know, the internet has been very, very good at is finding people that are interested in your product, about to buy your product, making sure you put your ad in front of them, and making sure they buy your product. But what about people that are not there yet? Do you really want to rely on your competitors to create that demand and reach those customers earlier? Um, and that's really what we're about. And if there's a one thing I want you to take away from this discussion, it is um, that you have to think about it a little bit differently. You have to think about, you have to have a different mindset, you need a different type of execution, you need a different type of data, you need a different type of measurement to really make this work. And what True Signal is about is about profile data. It's not what people are doing online, it's not what they're searching, it is who they are. Their demographics, their past purchase behavior, the, what they own, their cars they own, the houses they own, um, their financial profile, et cetera. It's using that to understand who's much more likely to buy your product and be a profitable customer. So I think the, the best way to illustrate this is to take you through a case study. Um, so uh, we had a home services client. Uh, this is, uh, again, much less sexy than underwear. It's uh, ensuring your uh, washer, dryer, your refrigerator, um, uh, home warranty policies. And they wanted to find, they've really kind of tapped out their, um, their bottom funnel. They, there's only so much they could find of people that wanted a warranty today. And secondly, most warranties are unprofitable in the first year because they buy them when they have a need and so they immediately make a claim. They don't become profitable until year two. They wanted to find people that they could get more profitable earlier in the consideration cycle. They also wanted to prove that it worked. Um, they wanted to understand every little piece of why it worked, how it worked, et cetera, and then they wanted to be able to do cross-device. So um, very quickly, what you got to do is you have to build the right audience. We like to say that's necessary but not sufficient. You have to onboard it. You have to find those people, the defined list of people, online, and we can do it across many different channels. You have to actually run a media campaign, and then you measure the results. And that really is about measuring all the way back to the transaction, not just did somebody submit a lead online or did they click on an ad. So building that audience, we took a sample of existing customers. These were uh, home warranty customers from the client. And we looked at it against all the offline data we have. We licensed data from dozens of different sources, 12 different types of data. And we used predictive analytics to say, what do these people have in common? Generally, about 100 factors that go into this. That defines the profile, and then we have to actually identify people online that match that profile. And that's what um, the, the second piece of it is, the onboarding. So we see about 200 million online users a month that we can match ac across all of this offline data and determine who are the people we want to target the ads to. In this case, we were doing it on RTV Exchange's standard ID display, but also on Facebook. So we have a, an, uh, about 600 million emails, so we can actually match directly to Facebook uh, profiles and target to them. So what we were doing is uh, Facebook mobile, they wanted to get on mobile phones, so mobile news feed as well as desktop, and then the RTB display, like I said. Um, ended up running, uh, the, the test kept expanding, it ran for six months, and the goal here is to optimize reach and frequency, because we have this defined group of people that are high value potential customers, you wanna make sure you reach as many of them as possible, but also with the right frequency, because it's not just one view and uh, uh, click and convert, it's you gotta see them many times and start their process. So here's what happened from a measurement perspective. What we're able to do is take a feed of every single policy they wrote during the months we were running the campaign and match it back to who actually saw the ad online. It's very powerful closed loop analysis. And what we saw is compared to a baseline, so we were comparing it to 
all the conversions, all the policies, and the lead to policy rate, um, and our people that saw the True Signal campaign. And they converted at three times the rate. And so if you look, I won't take you through the numbers, they're, they're there, but if you look at how much it cost us to reach these people and how much they were worth, it was a massive return on ad spend. But they really had to think about it in a different way in terms of defining the audience, running media for reach and frequency, not optimizing against click, not optimizing against engagement, and then looking at the back end data to see, hey, did these people actually buy policies from us and were they profitable? And that's the power of mid-funnel marketing if you do it the right way. So um, that's it. I have two of my colleagues here, uh, Greg Nicholson and Glenn Douglas, as well as myself. If you have any questions about this or think it could be useful to you, come find us. <laughs>